Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here, and in today's video, we're going to be doing a little bit of technical analysis on Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency markets, because if we zoom in here to the hour chart on the Bitcoin chart, what we're going to notice is that Bitcoin has been doing two main things over the last week or so. The first thing is it's been trading sideways, and the second thing is that it has continued to trade sideways while getting resistance at this level of $6,600. As you can see right there, that's a very important resistance level that Bitcoin needs to get through. So in today's video, we're going to be doing some short-term technical analysis on Bitcoin, talking about if Bitcoin can get back up to $6,600, if it can break it. And we're also going to be talking about why it's very important that Bitcoin breaks that level. We're going to be talking about the ramifications that would follow if Bitcoin does manage to get through that level. After that, we're going to be talking about the altcoins because the altcoins had a very, very bad week this week. Just a couple of days ago, I posted a video talking about how the altcoins were getting absolutely slaughtered. They were getting eviscerated just a couple of days ago. And now the altcoins are doing very, very well indeed. You can see tons and tons of altcoins up double digit here. We have maybe 30 or 40 altcoins that are up over 10% in the last 24 hours. So the altcoins are seemingly doing very well. And indeed, if you look at a lot of their charts, they do seem to have just put a bottom in in the last three or four days or so. So in today's video, we're going to be doing some short-term TA on Bitcoin. And then we're also going to be doing some technical analysis on some of these bigger altcoins here in the cryptocurrency space. But before we get into it, guys, if you enjoyed today's video, as always, consider dropping a like, hitting that subscribe button, and smashing the notification bell, guys. We do crypto videos every single day, and we not want you to miss any of them. And it really does help the channel if you do that. So let's get right into it. Bitcoin is currently trading at around $6,480. Over here on CoinMarketCap, it's reading about the same. Daily volume for Bitcoin is picking up a little bit. I want to see this get even higher. If Bitcoin is going to continue on this little rally that we talked about in yesterday's video, you can watch that video up here in the top right. If Bitcoin is going to continue on this rally that I'm hoping is forming, I would like to see some more volume come in, especially bullish volume, of course, but I would like to see this number continue to rise. Ethereum's volume is hovering around 1.6 uh, billion, which is pretty normal for Ethereum. And this is also rather normal for Bitcoin. It's just a little bit higher than what you might normally see. Now, Bitcoin is only up 1% today, but like I talked about, the altcoins are doing very, very, very well. You can see uh, Cortex is up 70%, Nano is up 45%, VeChain up 42%. Populous 38%, Ontology 37%. We do, of course, have some losers, but we don't have a single double-digit loser. And we have, like I said in the intro, uh, probably about 30 to 40 double-digit gainers, which is definitely a good sign for the Bitcoin for the uh, altcoin market. We don't see too many big players up here in these double-digit gain in these double-digit gains, but a lot of the big players are up quite significantly. Uh, significantly. XRP, for example, is up about 8.55% on the day. It's still down quite significantly on the week and over the last two weeks or so. Many of the altcoins are doing quite well today, but like I said with XRP, a lot of them have been getting absolutely slaughtered for the last three weeks or so. We're going to be looking at the charts for them in just a minute. One thing I also want to talk about is Bitcoin dominance, because a lot of people are interested in what I think is going to happen with Bitcoin dominance if Bitcoin does kick off a new rally. And I'll be honest, what I think is going to happen if Bitcoin does break some of these key levels of resistance, like $6,600 we're going to be talking about today, uh, the two, the two uh, excuse me, the 20 daily exponential moving average and the downtrend, if it does start breaking some of these levels, then I think it's going to kick off the rally. And if the rally does come, I think the Bitcoin dominance is going to start going down. And if Bitcoin gets above $8,400 and starts kicking off a proper bull run, I think it's going to start going down even more because the way I look at Bitcoin's dominance is a um, is a way to assess the risk or the risk is, is, is a risk assessment tool for the market because the way I look at it, a lot of the times when Bitcoin is having higher dominance, it means that people are less, are less willing to invest in altcoins. That's literally what Bitcoin dominance is. So to see this go up, signals to me that there's a lot more risk aversion in the market. So if Bitcoin does start a new rally that could potentially lead into a new bull run, I think that's going to go down. And I think the altcoins are going to get their time, but I think Bitcoin has to kick off the rally because Bitcoin is the one that is actually able to hold important pieces of market structure like $6,000. All of these other altcoins, basically every single one of them has broken do not not dozens, but several very important pieces of market structure. Ethereum broke uh, th uh, $380. Litecoin broke like uh, $87, whatever the number was a little while ago. Many of these altcoins have broken important pieces of market structure. So right now it's really coming down to Bitcoin, in my opinion, to get the cryptocurrency markets as a whole act together so that we can actually kick off a new rally that would lead into a new bull run. So I think Bitcoin will probably see dominance continue to rise or at least stay up here around 50, around 50 percent while the rally kicks off, if it does kick off, which I think it is going to kick off. And then when Bitcoin and the crypto markets get into a slightly safer position, some of that valuation will start flowing back into the altcoins because Ethereum used to have a lot more dominance and it's number two. And a lot of these altcoins have gotten absolutely destroyed. But nevertheless, that's basically all we wanted to cover on CoinMarketCap. So let's go ahead and do a bit of short-term technical analysis on Bitcoin. Now, 
I've done a lot more technical analysis on Bitcoin in the last couple of days. You can watch one of those videos up here on the top right if you're interested. But for today, I specifically want to talk about an important level of resistance that I didn't talk about in those videos, and that would be $6,600. Now, this is an important piece of resistance because we've seen two tops up here, and it's also kind of a big even. It's not like 6,723, you know, it's 6,600 flat. Normally when you have, the more zeros you have in a number, the more likely that is to be a level of support or resistance. That's the way I look at it. $20,000 has four zeros in it, so it's a big even. It's more likely to be an important level of resistance. $6,000 has three zeros in it. It's more likely to be an important level of resistance. If you have $6,324, that's less likely to be a level of resistance. And the reason for that is just a piece of, mark of mass psychology, which is something you need to have a good understanding of when you're in cryptocurrency markets or any markets indeed. Because what we're looking at here is uh, the market is basically just a manifestation of thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of bots and traders. Now the bots, you need to look at the psychology of a bot, which is basically the code. But since we see a lot more human traders in cryptocurrency markets, you specifically need to understand the way the psychology of traders in the cryptocurrency markets work. And a lot of people like to put trades in around big even numbers. And $6,600 on a short term here is kind of a big even because it's a it's a uh, it's a factor of 100. It's 66 times 100. So there's two zeros in it. That's one of the reasons that 6600 has played an important role down here. And that's why you normally see markets trading around numbers that have at least two zeros in them, right? If you were to see nothing but bot trading, then you probably wouldn't see that. But since we do see this, that's also another indication that there are indeed a lot of human traders in the cryptocurrency market. So $6,600 is an important level for that reason. It's also important because we have two tops over here that have established this as a level of resistance. We have kind of a double top over here. It's not like a double top that you would normally be familiar with where they'd be closer and there wouldn't be a bunch of trading action in between but it is most definitely a double top and to be totally honest to get my uh, cards on the table as it were I do think we're going to break $6,600 I laid out in yesterday's video and the day before why I do believe that Bitcoin is going to be starting a new rally over the next couple of days I do believe Bitcoin is going to continue to go up and I do believe that Bitcoin is going to continue to head north and start breaking key levels of resistance and the first one that it needs to break is $6,600 I think it is going to do it one of the reasons I think it's going to do it is because Bitcoin went down here to its recent low of $5,860 right around here, and it hasn't gone back there since. It hasn't retraced back there. We've been setting higher lows. We even saw about, uh, about the same low right here, but this was ever so slightly higher based on the Wixes. But Bitcoin has been trading up here on the, on the upper half. If you were to cut the distance from $5,860 to $6,600, Bitcoin's been trading on the upper half, not on the lower half. It hadn't been trading down here. It's been trading up here. So that's one thing that I'm happy to see with Bitcoin is it's been trading up here kind of close to this level of resistance especially in the last couple of days. And we've seen that happen many different times in the cryptocurrency markets and in Bitcoin. When Bitcoin likes to trade around a level of resistance, let me get my chart in the right spot here. When Bitcoin likes to trade around levels of resistance and it keeps butting its head against it, like it did over here with $7,500 back over here, we hit our head against this level many, many, many times. We came up here and hit our heads against this level many times before we finally broke out of it. And Bitcoin just continually kept shoving its head up there and trying to get through that support or that resistance level. And it finally did eventually get through it. Now, an example of where that didn't happen was up here. A similar thing happened up here and we didn't get through it. But when Bitcoin goes up there and trades around a level of resistance several times and keeps trying to push through it, that's sometimes a signal that the bulls are quite strong and the bulls are very insistent on getting up there. And a lot of times the bulls will normally get their way. And like I've said, I do believe the bulls are getting a little bit more strength right now because Bitcoin has managed to uh, to rebound a little bit from its recent lows, despite the shorts having been gone up. And now the shorts are going down. Now Bitcoin's trading sideways. Take that how you will. But for the last couple of days, it does seem like the, bull, the bulls are getting a little bit more of their strength back. I don't think the bulls are necessarily strong enough to kick off a proper rally yet. I think, like I said, we do need to see some breaks of some important resistance levels like $6,600 and the 20 daily exponential moving average. Another thing that I would like to see would be a bullish cross down here on the MACD. We've been talking about this for several days now, for about a week actually. We've been talking about how we wanted to see a bullish cross on the MACD. And at this rate, it looks like it's going to come within in about two to three days. You can see that the MACD line is curving up here to meet the signal line right now. And when that crosses, that's going to be a very bullish sign. But that's basically what we wanted to talk about with Bitcoin. Is Bitcoin going to get above $6,600? To put my opinion very simply, yes, I do think we're going to get above $6,600. It's probably going to happen within in the next 48 hours. If I were to put a percentage chance on that, I would probably put it between 60 and 70%. There's obviously a, there's a good likelihood that we don't get above it and that we do go back down here and test recent lows. But I think it's a little bit more than likely anyway that we are going to see a break above $6,600 in the next 48 to 72 hours. All right, with that said, let's go ahead and start doing some TA on the altcoins because the altcoins, I haven't really covered the altcoins in a while and there's a specific reason why I haven't covered the altcoins in a while 
in a while. It's not just because I'm lazy or it's not just because I don't like the altcoins. I don't have anything against the altcoins in general. I have something against a lot of altcoins uh, individually, but the altcoins in general, I don't have anything against them, especially the ones in the top 10. Most of the top 10 alt altcoins are legitimate projects that have actual use cases and are actually starting to implement some of those actual use cases. The main reason I haven't been talking about the altcoins is because the altcoins have been getting absolutely slaughtered over the last couple of weeks, guys. You can see the Ethereum chart here has just been absolutely brutal. I believe we covered on the channel. I don't remember if I talked about this in a video or not. It was three weeks ago or so at this point. But Ethereum was in this consolidation pattern right here. You can see the top and the bottom right here on its Ethereum over US dollar chart. And we broke bearish out of it. And I was hoping that Ethereum would get support here at around $390 on its Bitcoin, uh, on, excuse me, on its Ethereum US dollar chart. That most certainly did not happen. We plunged right through it. And Ethereum has been just tanking ever since. And it's not just Ethereum. The rest of the altcoin market has been doing very, very poorly as well. You see it's had just kind of this stair step pattern down here where it goes, gets a little break and continues going down. But now we've seen three green days on Ethereum. And a lot of the altcoins are doing something similar. A lot of the altcoins do seem to be setting... Uh, a little bit of a bottom in place. You can see the market, the, the just the general color of the market has gone from red over here to green over here. It's kind of striking how obvious that is. Look, I'm colorblind and I can see how obvious that is. Look, that's actually kind of interesting. I've never really noticed that on a market. But there's so much red over here and so much green over here. The, the contrast is very striking. But a lot of the altcoins have seemed to put their bottom in after that flush that we saw about three days ago. I'll put the video up where we talk about that in the top right because literally 96 of the top 100 cryptocurrencies were double digit red and two of the ones that were not were stable coins so the altcoins had a very very big flush just a couple of days ago and that would be down here in correlation with this bottom down here for ethereum and the same thing for the rest of the altcoin market so it seems like the altcoin market the altcoins in general seemingly have put a bottom in at least for the time being whether or not that bottom is going to hold i think they need to continue going up for another four or five days to really solidify that bottom and we need some things to happen on the Ethereum chart, for example, like a bullish MACD cross. I'd love to see a bullish MACD cross on the Ethereum daily chart. I, and I would also like to see the RSI continue to rise here on, the, on uh, Ethereum US dollar. You can see Ethereum US dollar, its RSI went down to about 18.7, about 19 on the RSI. There are a lot of good signals that the altcoins are very, very oversold right now. And they're going to continue to go up over the next couple of days. And I think they're also going to continue moving up as Bitcoin continues moving up. I'm pretty... I'm. I'm not pretty bullish, but I'm more bullish than I am bearish over the next couple of days. And I do think that Bitcoin and the altcoins are going to do quite well. With that said, let's start doing some actual individual altcoin technical analysis. There's not a lot that we want to look at as far as moving averages are concerned with a lot of these cryptocurrencies like I would normally, oh, excuse me, I got the burps, as I would normally like to look at with these altcoins because so many of them have just gone and crashed. So their moving averages, the moving averages that I like to look at are all very far north of the technical end of the, of the moving averages. So we're going to have to base this off of price action and support and resistance levels and the RSI and the MACD. And also the Bollinger Bands. Let me grab Bollinger Bands real quick because I know those are going, I know those, I know a lot of these are overextended on the Bollinger Bands. Let's get Bollinger Bands up here. You can see a lot of these altcoins and, and uh, Ethereum being one of them. We're just riding the outside band of the of the Bollinger Bands. This is the second. Uh, this is two standard deviations away from the twenty uh, SMA here in the middle. And when you're overextended that far for that long in the Bollinger Bands, that typically signals that you're going to see some kind of bounce, and that's what we've seen start to form in the last four days or so. Another thing that we can see here on the Ethereum chart, and I'm kind of doing TA on Ethereum, and a lot of what I'm saying on Ethereum applies to every single altcoin right now, because if we sort by change over the last 24 hours, you can see a lot of the altcoins are basically doing the exact same thing. That normally happens around the times when a market is climaxing. You see the marks kind of all line up and do the exact same thing. But one thing that we see on Ethereum and on a lot of the altcoin markets is that they are very overextended out here in the Bollinger Bands, and they're waiting for a bounce. And another thing that we see is a lot of these markets have formed a hammer right here. And that's a very that's not a very bullish indicator, but it is a bullish candlestick to see a hammer. A hammer is just you have a head that is that's about half the length of the wick. Now this is kind of a short hammer because the head is very short, but this is a hammer formation. And that is typically something that you see at the bottom of a market. We also saw one of these form on the Bitcoin market a couple days ago, right over here. This day, the 14th of August, we saw hammers form on pretty much every single cryptocurrency market. We saw it on Ethereum right there. We saw it a little bit on XRP. It's kind of a short one. You can see there's a hammer right there. Bitcoin Cash, we also saw one. There's a hammer right there. It's kind of a big old mallet right there, though. But we saw these form on pretty much every single altcoin market because a lot of the altcoins and also Bitcoin were very overextended. They've been going down for a very long time and they desperately needed a bounce. With that said, what I'm looking for for uh, Ethereum is I would like to see Ethereum continue to go up here for a couple of days and get up here towards some of these moving averages and break one of them. At this point, it doesn't even really matter which one it breaks. I would like to I would like it to see 
I would like to see Ethereum break the 20 daily exponential moving average, which is this bottom moving average down here, that, that uh, green or yellow color. I don't know what color that is. I'm colorblind. But I would like to see it break the uh, exponential moving average, the 20 EMA, right down here. Because if we can break that, then that would start pushing us up towards higher levels because that's a very important moving average. We've discussed that many, many times. I would not like to see Ethereum come up here and get resistance at this level and then bounce back down. That would be a very bad thing indeed. And I think it's more than likely that we will break it partially because we're still so overextended on the RSI down here over and oversold territory. And also because I think we're about to see a bullish MACD cross on Ethereum in the next couple of days. With that, we can also look at the, on the, uh, actually let's look at the Ethereum BTC chart because we haven't looked at that in a little while. The Ethereum BTC chart also kind of disappointed me because I was hoping that Ethereum was going to get support up here. Let's turn the Bollinger Bands off. I was hoping Bitcoin, Bitcoin, I was hoping Ethereum rather was going to get support up here around 5.4 million Satoshis. I even put a trade in here expecting it to bounce. You can see we had a little fake breakout here, a little fake bounce here. And of course it fell below and uh, hit my stop loss. So I, I lost like one or 2%, but that was a good trade. And actually I would have made the trade again if I knew what I know now because it was, most, it was most likely that Ethereum was going to go up from here. And also I had like a one or 2% risk, uh, one or 2% risk and a much higher reward. So that's where you want to be putting trade got, trades, guys. Just a little bit of a trading tip here. If you're ever putting a trade somewhere, try and put a trade if you, it, whenever you can, put a trade somewhere where you have the least amount of risk and the highest amount of reward. And that trade that I put here for Ethereum did turn out to be bust and I did lose maybe 2%. I don't remember exactly what I lost on it. I lost maybe 2% on this trade but I had the potential reward of literally like a hundred percent return because Ethereum could very easily come up here to uh, one million, uh, excuse me, 10 million Satoshis and start moving back up here if the altcoins have started rallying like I thought they would a little bit earlier. So that's where I put, that's where I put a trade in there and that's where you might want to put a trade in. Of course, in hindsight, it's easy to say it was a bad trade, but at the time it seemed to be a good trade. But nevertheless, Ethereum is doing a very similar thing that it's doing on its uh, US dollar comparative. It is sitting down here on kind of recent resistance or excuse me previous support because we did see a, a lot of trading back here around this 4.6 million satoshi region but we haven't seen a lot in a very long time this is one of the kind of overarching themes in the altcoin market right now is that a lot of them are just in free fall and they're at their lowest point that they have been all year so there's not very uh there's not really any uh good support levels to look at anymore because like with ethereum over here we broke below our good support levels and that is a theme like i said that carries on through the altcoin market uh, XRP had a very strong support level, or at least it seemed very strong up here around 44 cents. I, I said, yeah, I did say XRP. XRP around 44 cents. Now it's come down here to 26 cents. A lot of these altcoins have completely flushed out all of the valuation, if not most of the valuation, that they got in the in the uh, 2017 December rally and the continuation the f and the finale of their rally in uh, January. That's kind of funny, finale of their rally. A lot of them have completely lost all of that valuation. We can see on Ethereum here, I'm going a little over time here, but that's okay. We can see Ethereum here is back down to pre, back down to uh, pre November, December, and January levels back before the massive overhyped rally happened. So that's one thing that is really uh, quite exciting me is that a lot of that valuation, a lot of the hype valuation, is finally completely gone from the market, which does lend uh, which does lend my thinking to be more bullish on the market because one of the things that we needed to that we needed to accomplish in this bear market is get rid of all this hype price that we got up here in uh, November and uh, November, December, and January for a lot of these cryptocurrencies. And it seems like we've finally gotten rid of most, if not all of it. Bitcoin Cash is another one that I've been looking at. Bitcoin Cash is Bitcoin Cash is another. It, every single altcoin has had pretty strong support somewhere, and we've just recently broken it. So I, I'd like to see a lot of these altcoins set this as a permanent bottom, simply because they don't really have any other proper support level bottom below them. There's not a whole lot of TA you can do on individual coins right now, other than say, okay, well the Bollinger Bands are saying it's overextended, the RSI is saying it's overextended, the MACD says it might be about to cross bullish. It's basically the same story on all the altcoins, guys. I'll go and I'll go ahead and look through them, but and there is some different things that we want to talk about on each of them, but. Basically, that's how most of the altcoins are going right now. EOS is an interesting one because EOS for a very long time had a very strong uptrend here on its dollar comparative and on its Bitcoin comparative. We had a very strong uptrend and I was expecting that that would hold. I thought that would hold. It did not hold. That was a very powerful uptrend and EOS broke it. And the reason it broke it, in my opinion, is because the entire altcoin market was crashing and EOS being an altcoin obviously followed them and managed to break an all important level of support, which is very unfortunate because that was a very strong piece of market structure and it would have been very healthy for EOS to stay above this level. But of course, as the philosopher Mick Jagger once said, you can't always get what you want. And uh, sometimes if you try, you still won't get what you need, but oh well. But one thing that's interesting on EOS 
is that it is coming down here and setting support down here around uh, 70,000 Satoshis, which does correlate to some previous trading, uh, to some previous price action. Let's turn this off real quick. To some previous price action with the support level over here and a, uh, with a resistance level over there and a support level over here. So EOS, I'm, I'm liking EOS right now. I'm really liking all of the altcoins in general right now because like I said, they're all doing a very similar thing. EOS, just like most of the other altcoins, is very overextended down here in oversold territory on its RSI. Litecoin's another interesting one that we want to look at. And I'm going to look at a few more and then we're going to wrap up here. Litecoin's an interesting one because Litecoin had this parabolic just cliff run up. It just went straight up here at the end of 2017. It completely just mooned. This is like the definition of a moonshot, guys. And then we just have been trading down and down and down for a very long time. You can see a lot of these trading channels and stuff that I've drawn throughout the history of the channel like this one and that one and that one have just been broken uh, they broken bullish and they come down here and break bearish again and litecoin has just been hemorrhaging value over the last several months it ran up all the way up to 375 dollars and has come all the way down to 57 dollars it has not retained as much value as bitcoin has and one of the reasons for that in my opinion is that litecoin has a fundamental problem and that is that it is a it is a proof of work a very slow blockchain current cryptocurrency and bitcoin can get away with that because bitcoin is the number one cryptocurrency bitcoin is the big dog in the cryptocurrency space bitcoin was the founder of the entire field of, crypt of cryptocurrencies in the blockchain industry bitcoin can get away with being a slow uh, outdated system because pe because there are hundreds of developers working on improvements to it like the lightning network and schnorr signatures and everything Litecoin can't really get away with that as well as Bitcoin can because Litecoin doesn't have the street cred that Bitcoin does. And that's one of the reasons, in my opinion, that Litecoin has just been continuing to crash down here because Bitcoin Bitcoin does Litecoin's job a little bit worse, but it has so much more credibility to it. And there are tons of other um, transactional cryptocurrencies that are actually designed to be currencies that do Litecoin's job much better than Litecoin does. So that's one of the things that concerns me about Litecoin's uh, about Litecoin. But as far as the chart is concerned, anyway, Litecoin has pulled back to around $50 flat, which has proven to be a very important level in the history of Litecoin. This is around the time that I got in on Litecoin. I bought my first Litecoin. I bought a quarter Litecoin at $41.02 back here in early August. That was the first crypto I ever bought just to see how the uh, just to see how you could actually exchange stuff. I didn't want to put like $1,000 in here before I knew what was going on. But that was the first Litecoin I ever bought. It's back here somewhere if any of you guys are interested. I remember watching this go up to $91 and I was like, oh my gosh, that's the biggest run I'm ever going to see. I missed out. I'm never going to get another chance to see a massive run ever again. And then that happened. And then Litecoin jumped literally 300% or 200% or to like 250% in the span of about a week. So that's one thing that I'm concerned about with Litecoin is fundamentals aren't really exciting me as much as they used to. XMR is one that we haven't looked at on the channel. I don't think ever actually, but there's one interesting thing I wanted to show you on XMR. And that is that there's a very uh, there's a very long and well-developed uptrend that's been going on on XMR for well over a year now. This is a uh, XMR Monero has been around for a very long time. And this uptrend has served to be pretty strong for Monero. Now these aren't perfect bottoms down here. You can see there's not a perfect bottom down here. But this is kind of a region of an uptrend on the bit on the Monero Bitcoin comparative. So I would like to see Monero stay above this uptrend and not just completely destroy it like some of the altcoins have done to their uptrends. If Monero can hold up here, I'll definitely be more bullish on Monero. I do like Monero and I do like what they're trying to do because I think privacy coins are going to be very, very important, especially as Bitcoin and cryptocurrency goes public for legal and non-legal reasons because you can... I mean, you can follow any transaction on the Bitcoin network, but you can go and essentially money launder it through a privacy coin. So I think for that reason, and also for the reason that a lot of people don't want everyone to know every single transaction that they've ever done, for those two reasons and for many other reasons, I think privacy coins are going to be very, very good in the future. I think they're going to be sought after. XLM is an interesting one because XLM is in this really interesting pattern in this kind of gigantic flag pattern. We're going to cover XLM and then we're going to and then we're going to wrap it up. There's nothing I really want to talk about in ADA or NEO. They've just been kind of crashing and finding a bottom similar to the others. But for XLM, there's something interesting on the XLM BTC chart. And that would be this downtrend meeting this uptrend. It's a very long uh, triangle pattern. It's a very long uh, consolidation pattern. And if XLM does break above these this uh, downtrend right here, I'm definitely going to be putting a trade in here with a stop just below the uptrend, below the downtrend. Because I, I think that when XLM does break bullish out of this, and based on where the entire altcoin market is going, I think it will break bullish out of it. When it does break bullish out of it and we get confirmation of a breakout with volume and whatnot, I think it's going to be very, very good for XLM. So I'm going to be looking to put a trade in there. You guys might want to keep an eye on XLM Stellar Lumens also because Stellar Lumens has been doing very, very well over the last couple of months. Stellar Lumens was nowhere near top six 
for the majority of its history. It's been doing very well and actually been kind of a hedge against a lot of the cryptocurrencies lately. So that's definitely an altcoin that I'm going to be keeping my eye on. But guys, tell me in the comment section down below about what you think about today's technical analysis. What do you think about the market in general? Where do you think the market is going? As always, guys, I'm interested to hear your opinions. I do read every single comment and I do try and like every single comment. If you have any questions, I will try to respond to all of them. There are a lot of you guys at this point. If you guys are interested, you can also join the Discord server. There's a link to do so in the description down below. We have a lot of fun over there and I would be very happy to see your face in there and I will try to welcome you individually. I try to welcome every single person that joins the Discord server live personally. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this video. I want to thank each and every single one of you for watching as always. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.